There are fantastic treatments for men's sexual health issues, including libido, uh, erectile dysfunction, testicular dysfunction, infertility linked with that, even prostate. And so we see this huge body of evidence, and yet people will often say, the professionals out there will often say, oh no, there's no research. It's only because they haven't bothered to look. And in some cases, our medical professionals aren't allowed to actually tell you those things because they're locked into the pharmaceutical model of treatment. And the pharmaceutical model of treatment is not working. It doesn't work on these issues. And all they do is treat the symptoms. What I'm talking about here is getting to the underlying causes of all of these men's health issues and at the same time having lots and lots of side benefits. It's a win-win-win situation. And so we see all of these conditions, uh, sexual drive, libido, all of these conditions have gone down. So our sexual drive has declined over the last 50, 60 years. Maybe we'll wonder why. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Erectile dysfunction, impotence, literally, it's gone up. Unfortunately, the uh, bit hasn't gone up, but the levels of erectile dysfunction have gone up. And we find that uh, the general estimates in, in, a, in a Western population like the US, it's about 20% at the age of 20, and it goes up between 5 and 10% for every decade. So by the time you get to 70, uh-oh, it doesn't work at all, or virtually not at all. And that's if you follow the Western model. So we've also got testicular dysfunction, which is the, the problems with production of testosterone and other chemicals, as well as sperm, healthy, viable, dynamic semen that can help uh, increase fertility, not at 70, of course, but at a younger age. Uh, and linked to that is infertility. The infertility rates around the world have constantly been going up, so fertility has been going down as a result of the lower sperm counts now in the average Western male. And then finally down here, linking with all that is prostate problems like prostate hypoplasia, that's the inflammation of the prostate gland and prostate cancer. So wouldn't it be great if, if I could say to you, well, there is one plant that actually deals with all of these issues. And the studies haven't been done extensively on humans, but they've been done. Hundreds and hundreds of studies have been done on all forms of mammals. So your rats and cats and dogs and bulls and you name, I'll talk about that in a moment. The studies are there and they're convincing that they really are. But before we talk about the supplement, the superfood, what I want to highlight is all of these conditions, when you look at them, you can look at the characteristic conditions that literally are causing them. So why have these, why are these, why are these getting worse? Why is libido going down and dysfunction going up? It comes down to things like metabolic syndrome. Without any doubt, they're all linked with diabetes and blood sugar levels, hypertension and obesity. In addition, you've got stress. Stress has a major negative function, negative role in all of these. And then you've got toxins, particularly to do with fertility. And most people don't realize how deadly the toxins can be in your home environment to the sperm and the production of viable, very mobile, healthy sperm. Medications, aha, hold on, isn't that part of the solution? Well, it's a major part of the problem. In fact, probably the single most major cause of, of erectile dysfunction uh, after metabolic syndrome is medication. All of the medication, whether they're corticosteroids for for pain or for high blood pressure or for, it doesn't matter, many of them play havoc with the male health system and the sperm because the sperm is very, very fragile when it comes to uh, all of the exposure to any form of extra additional stress. And so medications, and then of course we've got that gut microbiome, unbeknownst to most people, the gut microbiome plays a huge role in our sexual prowess, our ability, our fertility and all those. Now, what's great is when you look at this superfood, which is called Moringa, that is, it's Moringa oleifera. That's its scientific name. But if you just call it Moringa, it's known, it's actually known throughout Asia as the superfood, the miracle food. It's also called the drumstick plant, and there's another uh, dozen or so names. But if you say Moringa or the miracle plant, people will know it because it's been used for so many conditions. That's what's great about it. You see, in the process of fixing all these, you tend to fix all of these situations as well. Yes, you do. 
That's what's going on. I'll show you that in just a moment. But this plant, and it's, what's, so, what's so fantastic about it, it's probably the most nutrient-dense land plant. There it is. That's growing in my backyard. And if I can grow it, you can grow it. Everyone can grow it. It's very simple. It grows in so many different climates. And as a result, you can also get your powder version of it there. One teaspoon, which is what I take every single day. And we'll talk about dosage a little bit later. But one teaspoon of Moringa every single day. And as a result, what we find is that it's treating all of these underlying conditions. And as a result, all of these are improving dramatically. Moringa is such a great food for male sexual health. It's a super male sexual health food without any doubt whatsoever. Not just because of the performance that it improves in all areas, and I'll show you that in a moment, but because it gets rid of all of the underlying, it helps reduce all of the underlying medical conditions as well. That's why it's known as the miracle food worldwide. And so what we know is it's antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, two major drivers of poor male sex health and performance. It's antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral, again, well, by the way, even for COVID. And we see that it uh, uh, improves metabolic syndrome, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and non-alcoholic fatty liver, all drivers of poor sexual health and poor sexual performance. What's great is by substituting a little bit of Moringa in your diet for some of the junks you're eating, then you actually increase not just all of your sexual performance, but reduce all of these as well. Arthritis, it's cardioprotective and detoxifying. But you're saying, well, okay, that's great, that's fantastic. What does it do for my sexual health? And it comes down to, first of all, let's look at libido, the drive. And when it comes to the drive, there are studies, hundreds and hundreds of studies on libido in animals, not in humans. Why in animals? Because in a lot of animal husbandry, that is with the uh, horses and the bulls and the rams and the goats, the high performance animals, there's a lot of money involved in making sure reproduction is effective and efficient and so on. So what they do is literally add Moringa. So we've got, there are studies on rats and they may, they may not be high performance uh, uh, animals in the animal husbandry, but they're the best ones to test on rats, mice, goats, Bulls, and we all want to be known as the bulls, the rams, and of course rabbits are known for their fecundity, their uh, reproductive ability, and of course when you add a little bit of moringa, it increases, so it increases the libido, the drive, and sexual performance, and all the other things of all of these animals. So just imagine, well, even imagine which one do you want to be, guys? And then we get down to a, a more in-depth study, and or studies, and again, there are lots of these studies, and they show increased sexual performance in rats, increased um, frequency and receptiveness, increase in testosterone, the stress-related hormones produced in the body, increase in the Leydig cells, which are the cells in the testes and the gonads, which are essential for good reproductive health, um, increase in the antioxidant capacity in those areas, and of course, an increase in sperm which we all want because they're all linked together. So it dramatically improves the libido. Then you get on to the second probably major condition people are worried about, guys are worried about, or relationships are worried about, and that's erectile dysfunction. Now, unfortunately, the only human trial I could find on this was where they combined it with a drug. And the reason they did that is because it's patentable. It's able to be, if it shows the performance, they're able to then make it a combination and sell it. That's the way I, uh, the take I have on it. So let's get back to it. In the animal studies, it reversed all measures of diabetes-induced erectile dysfunction. Yep, all of these conditions, all of them lead to an increased risk of erectile dysfunction. Um, then you've got rats and inhibits key enzymes involved in erectile dysfunction. These are multiple studies that have been done. And in rats, it increases the intracavernous pressure. That's the actual pressure in the penis which is a measure of the ability to perform erectile dysfunction or not. And uh, increased sexual activity in diabetic and non-diabetic mice, so it performs help performance in every area. And in another study where stress, rats, and stress is a major cause of erectile dysfunction, it increased the intromission frequency, which is the penetration, the amount of times they had sex, and um, decreased the intromission latency, which is how frequently they had it. So uh, 
uh, on all accounts, Moringa increased performance in libido and erectile dysfunction, as well as all these other benefits. In addition, the studies show there is a huge improvement in sperm quality. Literally, the studies have been done on rats, goats, ram, bulls, and of course, roosters, and all of them show an increase in concentration of the sperm and an increase in the motility, the ability to move, and viability, and that is how long and how well it lasts. In fact, studies were done uh, for IVF and taking frozen samples of uh, things like the bulls and ram sperm and moringa, if they consume moringa preceding that, when the sperm was collected, the viability was so much greater after it had been literally defrosted. Uh, increases testosterone and dihydroepiandrosterone, which are important for reproduction and of course for men, and it increases the antioxidants, which is one of the reasons why it actually keeps the sperm so much more viable. Then when it comes to potential damage to the sperm, there's lots of things in the environment that can cause damage. And these are some of the toxins out there. You might be surprised by a couple of the ones at the bottom, but these are some of the toxins out there that can cause damage to sperm. And my first suggestion is reduce your exposure to it, but then you've got things like uh, heavy metals, like mercury and cadmi cadmium, drugs like tramadol and chemotherapy, fungicides, fluoride is a poison to the sperm. That's what you get in the toothpaste, by the way. Acrylamide, which is what you get in uh, highly processed foods. And of course, mobile phone radiation, that's what you get when you have your mobile phone down around your groin region. Not a great idea, guys. We also find that it decreases um, prostate hyperplasia and you're young and you think, well, that's not going to affect me. Well, let me tell you, it might. Because something like 48% of males over 50 have an enlarged prostate gland and it gets 80% in males in 80. You might think, oh, I'll do something about it when I get to 79. Well, maybe a bit too late. So start now by having the Moringa. The other things that can make a big difference when it comes to male sexual health include physical activity, and that just comes back to simple things like walking. Walking is by far the most easiest, convenient exercise people can do, at least the majority of us and weight-bearing exercise to increase the testosterone and increase sexual health parameters in males. Then, of course, it goes back to diet, and this is all linking to it. Well, the Moringa is fantastic for reducing some of the bad consequences of a Western diet. Also, much better if you start adopting a healthier Mediterranean-style diet. Decrease processed foods, decrease sugar and fried foods. Now, the final question you'll probably be asking is how much? Well, the studies actually use quite a lot. The studies use huge amounts in some cases, and it's been shown to be extremely safe. It's basically a food. It's a, it, it put it this way, it's a little bit like spinach, concentrated spinach. So one to three teaspoons, these are the little spoons. One to three teaspoons is where I recommend people start with one. That's what I've come across in the literature for human consumption, start with one. But when you go to WebMD, it actually recommends up to 10 or 11 teaspoons per day. That's the equivalent of about uh, four or five serves of veggies a day. That's how good this stuff is. So you can start with one or three, go up to 10 or 11, and check it out on WebMD. Now we've got a lot more information on our YouTube channels. Check them out, we've got comprehensive information about testosterone, male health, health and well-being, and of course, subscribe and tick the like button to share with your friends.